from Kikuyu BTM TV, Boston. This is your host, Bernard Thomas Makomi. Today we have a special guest coming all the way from Kenya in Migori, but based in Nairobi, the General Secretary of all Pefa Churches in Kenya, which number over 1,300, Bishop John Okinda and his wife, who visited the United States in October 2016. While in Boston, the, the bishop was invited and agreed to be the guest preacher at a Kenyan Christian Fellowship group called Malden Fellowship, which meets every Monday night at Pefa Church Boston area, Malden City. Let's go to that fellowship on Monday night, October 3rd, 2016, and see and hear the prison worship songs followed by the word. The bishop's sermon was based on the theme, If everyone refuses to hear you, God will always hear you. Let's welcome the General Secretary of Pefa, Kenya, Bishop John Okinda. Kumago kukikuyu BTM TV, Boston, Nenibana Thomas Makomi. Umode tuena mgeni wagiteo, Bishop Usherete Kuma, Kenya, Umete Migori. No akorago wagei karanairofi. Mudumwe, munene, todo newe jenu sekretari wa makanida mwode maa pefa Kenya. Uria eta kuo Bishop John Okinda. Hamu na mutumia wake, ni maa sherete kuku Amerika October 2016th. Ego ku Boston, Bishop Neo Lidio, ahujiri adoa Kenya, na agetekira, akehuje, akehujia, guata niroine, emwea, ya etekia gai akuma Kenya, itagu Molden Fellowship, alia ma, masya managia, alita demwe o kiumi ya mudenya, wa juma tatu kana mande, waini, kanidhaini wa Pepper Church Boston, area, deini wa mushi wa Molden City. Le uneto die, guata niroine yo, Bishop wa hujirie, toga dhikiririe kigosho na mahujio make, mudhenya wa juma tatu, waini October idhatu 2016. Bishop wa hujirie, arumereire, domereirie no. Ona doo the magirega, uku dhikiririe, gai, niyago dhikiririe, hede shio the. Le uneto nyite baru janu sekitari wa pefa, Kenya, Bishop John Okinda. Hey girl, we worship you alone you are worthy to be praised you are alpha and omega we worship you alone you are worthy to be
Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, we worship your name. We give you praise, O oh God, because of your grace and mercies, O oh Lord. We thank you, Lord, that once again we are before you, that we may hear your voice that is able to speak life everlasting, O oh Father, even when situations are desperate, even when death is lacking, O oh God. When you, we are in your presence, you speak life to us, O oh God. We gather here again to exalt you, to magnify you, Lord, and to declare before Father, heaven speak to us, O oh God. You will lift us and fortify our inner man to be able to rise to every challenge for in our generation. We thank you, God. We give you glory. And all that you are doing tonight is for you, O oh God. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tutaendelea kumsifu buwana. Kwa sababu wa nasta hili. Amen. Chanku tu maini sina ilo damu ya that our hope still our, even our hope is in you oh god we pray that my yesu sinawe mosha dambi zangu kuz o chakutu maini sina ila damu yake yesu sinawe mawakutosha
my God. Praise God. Amen. Do you think that things are better? Amen. Do you think that things are different than you came? Hallelujah. Because Jesus is going to turn around everything. Amen. Jesus is going to turn around your situation tonight. Jesus is going to turn, your, turn around your finances tonight. Amen. If you believe in him, right? It's only if you believe. Right? If only if you believe in him that things will be better for you. Hallelujah. Because it's just desire you believe. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'm glad to be in the house of the Lord. Because you say where two or three are gathered for his name. He is here. This is where the Lord wants me to be here because the Lord is here. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Are you glad to be here? Are you glad to be here? Amen. I'm so glad to be here. Praise God. I'm saved. I love the Lord as my personal savior. Uh, the Lord has been good to me. The Lord has uphold me. The Lord has taken care of me. Amen. I have a testimony. The Lord saves and sustains. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'm encouraged by the word of uh, uh, the book of John. The book of John chapter 21 verse 15. I just read quickly. That after breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than this? And Peter said, yes, Lord, I love you. I love you more. And the Lord says, feed my lambs. Feed my lambs, Jesus said. Jesus repeated the question again, Simon, John, uh, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. Once more, he said, uh, he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Now, Peter was grieved that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know that, you know everything. You know that I love you. Then Jesus feed said. my lamb. We're going to stop there, but I'm going to continue a little bit. Loving God. Amen. Simon Jesus Peter. had a conversation with, with Simon Peter. That, do you love me? Do you really love me? Do you really care for me? You know, because Jesus, had a, Jesus wasn't reminding Peter of what he has done because now this is a resurrected, resurrected Jesus. Amen. This is a resurrected Jesus. It's not the crucified one. B before he was crucified, uh, Simon Peter uh, betrayed him. Right? Now Jesus is asking Peter again, do you really love me with, in, your, in your heart? Do you really love me? Do you, take, do you really care for me? Why was Jesus uh, saying that to Peter? Was he saying that to torment Peter? Right? Was he saying that to torment Peter? Maybe you might think that. Because if, like now, like our lives today, if somebody, if somebody betray you like a, a friend, right? And then maybe you part ways again and then you, you mend it again. And then somebody tells you, the, the same person say that I love you. Will you really, you know, will, will you believe it? You know, and somebody stressing, continue stressing to you that I really love you. I really love you. Or do you really love me? You'll have that. But Peter, Jesus was telling Peter this because he was preparing Peter. He was preparing Peter for the things that are major that are coming. Because he knew that Peter was strong enough. He knew that Peter, and he knew Peter that will carry, uh, uh, who will feed his lamb. He knew Peter, that Peter will, will, will take away the, uh, the gospel to many people. And that's why he told Peter, because he knew Peter. Right? And then uh, verse 18 says, uh, the truth is, when you were young, you were able to do all these things. And go wherever you wanted to go. But you are old. You will stretch out your hands and others will direct you where, uh, where, you, where you don't want to go. This doesn't mean that when I was reading this I, you know, and searching it, uh, Jesus wasn't telling uh, Simon that he will grow unto his old age, right? And he will tempt it. Jesus was talking about, uh, uh, was predicting what will happen to Peter. Because Peter will be crucified as Jesus. Amen. And he wanted Jesus, he wanted Peter to take the yoke, to take the yoke of God. He wanted Peter to persevere even to the, to the you know, even, uh, uh, even uh, by the time he was going to be crucified. He wanted Peter to have that zeal of the Lord. Amen. I'm encouraging you this, uh, this afternoon that let us all have the zeal of the Lord. Let us all love the Lord with all our heart. Let's all love our Lord with all our mind. Let's all love the Lord with all our, our strength and our might. Amen. Because the, the Lord desires us to love him more. Amen. Just loving God and knowing God and knowing his oracles. That's all that the Lord desires from us. Let us not be coming here a day, every Monday, every Monday for nothing. But let us come here knowing the Lord. Amen. Knowing his oracles. 
knowing his will unto us. Because we do not know that the Lord is preparing us for something major. Because whatever things, uh, when you see a ship on the ocean, a ship doesn't, doesn't ship because of, of the water around it. Amen? But the ship sinks because of the water inside. If the water gets inside the ship, the ship will sink. But the ship does not sink because of the water around it. There are so many things that are around us, but we are not going to sink because of the things or the problems that are around us. We are going to sink if you allow all those things to come into our hearts. We are going to sink if you allow all these things to be manifested in our spirit. We are going to sink if you let troubles uh, to come and overtake us. We are going to sink if you allow our marriages to sink us. But we are not going to sink because of the things that are around us. We are going to sink because if we allow those bad things to enter into our spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Are you blessed this, this afternoon? Ah, this evening, are you blessed? Amen. Give a clap offering to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to give this time to uh, testimonies, who, uh, anybody who has a testimony. And before that, I'm going to invite Pastor Morongesha to come and, uh, and testify of what the Lord has done to you. Because I know the Lord has done major things in your life. Amen. Welcome, Pastor. <laughs> The major thing that the Lord has done to me is salvation. I'm saved and I'm ready to go to heaven. Amen. Anybody else with a testimony? Anybody else? Anybody else with a testimony out there? There's nothing the Lord has done to you. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I'm born again tonight. My name is Alex. I'm so blessed that God has been gracious to me to preserve me. Um, to, today, I was somebody asked me, uh, how, how long have you been married? And, you know, that struck me that by God's grace, it's almost now 10 years in December 23rd. And I, I'm so glad my beautiful wife, She's there, the smile, that smile always makes me thank God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So I'm here to say, by God's grace, it's not just marriage, but by God's grace, we are preserved. God bless you. Amen, amen. Getting preserved by the Lord, amen. As we all preserve food in our fridges. If you cook and you leave food outside, it's going to go bad. Amen. But let us preserve our heart, as our brothers say, preserving our heart to the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to invite Pastor Lucy to come and give us a, a worship song as we invite uh, Pastor Jeremiah as we prepare for uh, to hear the word of God because we want to have time to hear the word of God. So Pastor Lucy come and give us a worship song. Amen. Amen. Let's stand before the Lord. To now Kuwa budu bwana tuna kuwa budu twa kuwa budu tuna kuwa budu bwana tuna kuwa budu tuna kuwa 
Amen. I'm reminded that there's some guests here uh, in our meetings, but uh, I think there was no time for uh, uh, visitors. But I think I'll ask Pastor Jeremiah to take over there and invite the, welcome you know, the visitors and welcome the pastors who are here in our meeting. Uh, Mama Shilo, uh, we, we normally call her Sister Susan, Bieni Makofi. Praise the name of the Lord. Mama Shilo is our church secretary, and thank you for bring, uh, your leadership gift to Modern Fellowship and sharing it here. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, you know, I want I want us to pray for the word after this, but uh, um, you know, I'm delighted tonight to see you. Amen. You know, I, this is what I love more than fellowship. Did you did you feel something good about that worship? That was good to feel the presence of the Lord here. A uh, couple of things. Number one, I'm, I'm very you know blessed to see all the pastors in the okay, house. Sir, thank you, Pastor Lucy. Thank you. <laughs> Pastor John, Pastor John, come on, Pastor John, Pastor, Pastor, that's a pastor right there. Sometimes he sits too at the back, you know. When I do Pastor, while I want to quit, quiet. Praise the name of the Lord. But Pastor, thank you very much. Nice to see you tonight. Uh, may God bless you for being with us. Um, you know, if this is your first time, like, you know, Mama Shiro said, if this is your first time to come to Modern Fellowship, you have never been here, and you're just visiting, please raise up your hand. You see that hand? Oh, I, no, you, Bishop, hold on a second. Anybody else out there? Oh, it's your first time. Send us your name and where you come from. What are you going to say? My name is Esperanza Kiwe. I'm from Rwanda. Nimeokoka 95. Praise the name of the Lord. From Rwanda. Fellowship. You understand? You can meet anybody from anywhere, any, any, any Monday. And you understand? So that is wonderful. Nice to meet you. My sister, welcome. And if you're available on Mondays, we are here from 7 o'clock to 8.30. You understand? My brother, are you, are you from here, my brother? Nice to see you. What is your name? You're not a visitor. You look new to me, but praise the name of the Lord. But I, yeah. Oh, oh, you look different. Did you did you calculate your hair or something? Glory be to God. Uh, no, no, no. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just. But, but thank you, thank you, uh, Livingstone. Praise the name of the Lord. I want, I want, I want to take this opportunity before I call Pastor Karaja to invite the speaker for us. But I would like to in, uh, to, uh, to introduce you to this special man of God, Pastor uh, Bishop Hiram Jenga from Oasis of Love in Wapi, Gilgil. Praise the name of the Lord. I met, I, I met him yesterday. Uh, yesterday we had a, we had a time together. I was going for only two hour dinner time. You know, you know we, you know dinner time. But we spent I'm only five, four, five hours. I mean, <laughs> quite a lot of hours together. We shared a lot of things. I was so blessed. This is a man of God, and I know he's coming in a couple of weeks uh, to minister to us. But Bishop, can you t come tell us your names? You know, I know I already mentioned your name, but tell us what you are doing in the Gil Gil for a minute, and then we move on because uh, this is a Bishop. Come on. So Amen. Thank you so much. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm humbled to be here in this modern fellowship. And, uh, you know, it's, it's very exciting because I think sometimes people have a long, very wrong image about uh, America, isn't it? And sometimes it's like when you go there, you can't get people who are serious. But when I see this kind of a thing, this is very exciting to my heart and it's a wonderful thing. Amen. So this makes us feel very good when we come here. Uh, so just like you said, I'm Bishop Hiram Jenga. I'm, I come from Kenya, Gilgil. That is where I am. And um, that's where I'm ministering by God's grace. And so I know we shall have more time. So for now, God bless you. Thank you so much. I'm so blessed, my brother, to see you. Thank you so much for being with us. And uh, uh, we can't wait to see you coming back here. Glory be to God. So I want to I wanna invite Pastor uh, Dr. Karaja. Uh, and this is very special. I'm telling you, uh, because of the general secretary, because now you don't know that I know you now, 
<laughs> just to let you know. You know, hakuna sili hapa. Hakuna sili. Praise the name of the Lord. But, uh, but uh, you know, let me, let me mention some few things about Pastor Karaja because this is his church leader, one of the church leaders. And, and it's very important. They say here that uh, uh, give respect to where it is what? It is due. I want to first of all thank Pastor Karaja, Dr. Karaja, for hosting this modern fellowship. We just had a problem. We were meeting, I just want to let you know, we were meeting in a little place. That place, my goodness, no, nobody b was breathing on Monday night until I don't know how long. It was so small, but, but thank God for Mama Kigod. It was, it was a, such a, a very powerful place. I don't know how much anointing is in that place even right now. Na kuambia kama we ukua ata kama mugojo, uende ukayakaya kwa masaa uombe uko, lazima uponyo. Uko, iyo room. My goodness, the kind of anointing that was flowing in that room it was very special. But let me tell you, uh, this has happened with many fellowship. Not only this one, we happened to be kicked out for some reason. You understand? Uh, you know, through packing and stuff, you know, there were so many pro problems. But guess who opened the door, uh, General Secretary? Who opened the door? Dr. Karaja, this man right here. He told us you can come because it was just right here. We didn't feel like in a, a struggle for it because he gave us the opportunity to come and fellowship here. That is Doctor. That's Pastor Karaja. Do you understand? He's a very special man. Now, the other thing I would like you to know, um, I like I like you to know, and also the guest who comes here. You know, uh, 20 years ago I came to Massachusetts. when I came here, uh, a, lo a long time, long time. When I came here, I, I, I was living down south in Tennessee. We came here uh, some 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 years back, and the, I, I met so many pastors, but I found one special friend of mine. Not only just just because he's a pastor. Dr. Karaja, he's a very special man. I'm not saying this just to praise. You know, people praise people. Mutu wakiwa mumbaya, kila mutu wanajua hapa. Mimi pasa jenema, kila mutu wanajua. Mutu wakiwa mumbaya na kuambia weni mumbaya. Sindio? I'm like that. I'm, I'm, I'm like that. I, I'm, I'm white, white, I'm, I'm, I'm white what? Yeah, that's how I am. Yeah, exactly. But I met this man, and, 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 uh, um, some of the things that Pastor Karanja uh, we have gone through with him, especially in the ministry, because ministry takes a lot of you know different dynamics, uh, a lot of things in Boston. Lakini kitu kimoja ni takuambia general secretary, you know for sure if you go to uh, if you go to a city, there are those people we call men men of the gatekeepers. We call them gatekeepers. Thank you, my brother, gatekeepers. And if you pass them, <laughs> we are we are talking about this yesterday. We, we, we mentioned this about yesterday, and I mentioned this a couple, couple weeks ago, because there are those men. This is a man appear in this city. Pastor Karaja, you know, one of the things that I, I don't do usually, and he does, that ministry doesn't get me to me a lot, but I don't know what he does to the people who suffer from alcohol, alcoholism. I don't know, that demon is a, is a very, that demon, a demon, he knows how to deal with it, and that ministry is very hard. Because you preach them today, tomorrow you're going to see them drunk and you're going to get frustrated. But Makaraja gets a breakthrough in that. The other thing, um, just to let you know, General Secretary, in, in, in here in New England, we have what we call Pastors Fellowship. We have a Kenyan Pastors Fellowship. It's a group of pastors who we gather together all the time. Uh, every, uh, we, meet, we meet by, 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 by monthly. <clears throat> and and uh, um, this fellowship has been existing for the last this eight or ten years, Pastor. Almost like ten years. Uh, yeah? A long time, and when we started this fellowship, you know, we did, we were not many pastors. But this time around, pastors have come to Boston. I don't know. I'm telling you, this does not happen in America, but it happens in Boston. We meet, we gather, we eat together, we pray, we pray for one another. Pastor Rusi, Rusi can testify about that. Is that Pastor Rusi? We we gather together and we eat together, and and we fellowship. There's a lot of things we do. You know, that has to do with the leadership of our community. Hapa kuna sabuchifu sisi diotuna. We guard the city here. We talk to the people. We serve the people. But a couple of years ago, he, he was, he was were well, you the chairman by then or vice chairman? And remember, then, then the other day, then he was elected again. Now he is the vice, sec, uh, vice, vice chairman again. So Pastor Karaja has been very, uh, very effective, effective leader for you just to know. I'm saying this because nobody will tell you that and just to let you know that. And so we thank you, Pastor Karaja, for the ministry you have done. And every time we come here, we feel home. He has made, made everybody very comfortable. And you know, when I go to Kenya, I, I don't even ask. I have to go to his house to see his, his wife and children. I, 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 I
Sema sasa niko kwako. Eh. Eh, haleluya. Na nauliza kama natuma pesa naambiwa eh. eh ni mtu ambaye amebarikiwa na Mungu. So Pastor Karaja, thank you very much for your humble spirit uh, and the way you have been serving our community and, uh, and especially uh, you know serving also here especially this this region here. I would like to welcome you to call the speaker for us. I can call the speaker when you are here. You have to do it Dr. Karaja. Please welcome Dr. Karaja. Very special man. Thank you Pastor. God bless you. Bwana wetu wasifiwe na wasalimu nyote katika jina la Bwana Mjambo. Ah uh, kwa sababu ya masaa ni tabukalika tu mtumishi wa Mungu ndipo saa je tulisha eneo la Mungu na sa great honor kuwa na mtumishi wa Mungu mwenye cheo kubwa cheo kubwa sana. Bwana wetu wasifiwe. Yeye eh, ndio general secretary wa kanisa yetu ya Pefa. Tasa akiniambia rudi jumbani. Narudi tu jumbani. Amanda authority bwana wetu wasifiwe nikiwa hapa amanda authority akiniambia rudi jumbani bara moja narudi jumbani karibu karibu mwisho kwa hiyo mamlaka niliyopewa ninasema usirudi nyumbani I want to begin by being thankful to the Lord for giving me the opportunity to stand before this great congregation here at Molden Monday Fellowship coming with me in this trip is my dear wife we've been married for the last 31 years and we thank God for that and my host Pastor Jared for making it possible for me to be here in Boston I want to sincerely thank you and open your home for me to stay and also my colleague in the fellowship Dr Karanja whom we work with in the same fellowship right in Kenya where we have 3125 congregations of Pefa churches and we are so grateful for what God is doing right here in Boston and uh, I can't tell it all but I'm so delighted I want to thank you for allowing me to stand in this pulpit it's a great privilege for me a great honor which has only come once in my lifetime as you can see I'm growing old so this is coming to me for the very first time in my whole life. I want to thank God for this opportunity. So thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, I've come with the pulpit with several books. I remember one time I was in the church with my mother. I was still young and a preacher came with so many books and asked my mother, will he read all of them while we're still here? I want to assure you I'll not read all of them. I'll just read. I I'm just making... <laughs> Uh, I serve with Pefa Church, as I've said. And in the town that I'm coming from, I'm the chairman of the Pastors Fellowship. So I'm so honored to be here. This is very, very significant to me that I can come here and stand in a fellowship of interdenominational. And I tell you, I love ministering and working with different people from different organizations because it is in that unity that God commands his blessings and for this city to be blessed we must be united there is no question about it and we are not just going to look at our diversities we are going to look at the benefits that we can get out of our diversities and I want to thank God for that so I will be very brief tonight and I will share God's word as I've been asked to do so and uh, I want us to turn to the Bible the book of Jeremiah chapter chapter number two the book of jeremiah chapter number two i'll be asking someone among the congregation to read for us and uh, if you begin reading you will be reading several scriptures even as i continue tonight uh, i will read or paraphrase several scriptures with only one theme that i want to run across tonight but i want to bring several scriptures so that I can be able to convince you of the very theme that I want to run across. I will use these scriptures as my evidence. And after I'm done and rest my case before you, I pray that there will be a good verdict from you. That you will make the right decision from what I'm talking about. I will not put you with so many hallelujahs because I want you to listen. But also I would pray that you don't give me a time of sleep. You look at me straight into my eyes because that will help me 
to know that you are following me. So if you will do me that favor, I'll really, really appreciate you. Just look straight to me. Look at me. Uh, my face is not so lovely, so, but don't worry about that. Uh, just look at it and uh, don't take it home with you. But, but you know, the words that I'll speak is what... <laughs> I see you laughing. Whether you're laughing at me or laughing with me, I don't know. But, but I hear you laugh anyway. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. So, so uh, as I said, uh, we will look at several scriptures, at least, at least uh, maybe five of them, because the first one would be Jeremiah, and then I think I'll take you to Acts of the Apostles chapter 10, and then I'll take you to Genesis chapter 40, then I'll bring you down to uh, the book of Esther. The book of Esther, look at chapter number 2, but I will talk in chapter number 6, which I'll try to tie, and then finally I want to finish and conclude my case with the book of Luke chapter number 23. Tell your neighbor this is not too much. So that's how I'll take you. So I'm just trying to lead you where I'm taking you so that I don't take you by surprise. But if I say anything in between, that will be a revelation. So that one you take carefully. Because the, these ones are planned, but God can bring another scripture. If you hear another scripture which I did not mention, take that one seriously because it's direct from God. These other ones are direct from me because I wrote them down, okay? But anything that will hear me mention, that is a revelation. Which that can happen in the assembly like this. Are we ready to start? So let's move. Who is reading? Who is volunteering? chapter 2 the word of the Lord came to me go and proclaim in the hearing of Jerusalem I remember the devotion of your youth how as pride you loved me and followed me through the desert through a land not sown Israel was a holy was holy to the Lord the first fruits of his harvest all who devoured her were held guilty and disaster overtook them declares the Lord Hear the word of the Lord, O house of Jacob, all you clans of the house of Israel. This is what the Lord says. What fault did your fathers find in me that they strayed so far from me? They followed worthless idols and became worthless themselves. They did not ask, where is the Lord who brought us up from Egypt and led us through the barren wilderness, through a land of deserts and rifts, a land of drought and darkness, a land where no one travels and no one lives. Let's, I, let, 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 let's stop it there. And let's just pray for that word. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we can read your word publicly to the hearing of your people. Lord, I pray that even as I expound on these very words, your Holy Spirit will be here to quicken my spirit and make a connection with their spirits tonight, my Father. Lord, I thank you for the wonderful opportunity that has ever, never been seen. And Lord, you've made it possible for us to gather here. We thank you for this fellowship. What a wonderful place. Lord, we are honored of your presence that is so real in this place we thank you and we pray that lord just speak to us we just surrender ourselves to you we ask you lord to just minister to us as you will lord if there is anybody who is sick to such we pray for your healing lord if there is any who need direction we pray for direction from you god if there is any who is downcasted we pray for the lifting hand of god even to rest upon them lord we pray that you meet with the needs of your people tonight and it's in jesus name i pray and believe amen Brothers and sisters, I want to run a single theme, as I've said. And the theme I want to run tonight is a theme entitled, When Everyone Else Forget, God Remembers. All my scriptures, I'll be convincing you only in that one single theme which I want to run across. When all happen to forget, God remembers. And the opening scripture which we've used in the book of Jeremiah, we all know that Jeremiah was a weeping prophet. Jeremiah was raised at a time that the nation of Israel had gone away from the will of God. They'd done evil things in the eyes of their God. And Jeremiah comes also to announce the judgment that is just about to come from the hands of Babylon. And we know that story. But even in that, even as God wants to judge his people, God begins to tell the people of Israel, 
important words that I want to bring to your attention. God says that I remember your love to me. Yes, right now you are running away from me. But I'm not forgetting when that time when you people loved me and you followed me. God will always remember the good things that we've done to him even when he brings judgment to us. It's not that God will punish us and kick us off without remembering even the single things that we did for him. And this is what I want to bring to you, people of God. Because there are those who have served God even in this foreign land. Some of you have served God at home. I want you to know even if nobody calls you to say thank you, God will not forget what you've done. God will always remember the works of his people. So God talks to Jeremiah and he says, tell these people that I'm a God who remembers. I remember when they were in the wilderness and they loved me. They followed me. They did everything for me. Even though I'm going to judge them, but I still remember the best part that they did. In this world, when you part ways with people, they only remember the bad things that you've done. They will not recollect the good things that you've done. But I want to thank God, even if all of them will forget, there is a God in, of Israel who will always remember the good things that we've done. Amen. Remember the good things that we've done. And you see, I remember someday I was, I think I was in Nyeri. I was in Nyeri and we were, we were dedicating one of our bishops, Bishop Ndirangu, and we were there, uh, James Ndirangu. He was in the U.S. the other time. I don't know whether he's still here. And we were dedicating him into the bishopric of the Mount Kenya region. And uh, I remember there was a man that I knew when I was a young man and he was in the congregation. And I went to him and I introduced myself. I used all the big titles that I'm holding. And then I asked him after I did that, I said, do you remember me? And he said, I don't remember you. I felt embarrassed that this man cannot remember me. Brothers and sisters, there are people that you will serve and they will forget about you. But I thank God who will never forget your works. So everything you do, remember that God remembers more than what you can remember. So here, as I do my opening remarks, I'm reminding everybody here who is a minister or anybody here who has ever served God in one way or another, God remembers all that we've done. I want to give you another scripture. As I said, I'm running one theme with only one thing to convince you that there is God who will not forget you. And at the end of the day, I want you to appreciate God and thank him that is always thinking of you. And God, I say in most meetings that I've gone to, that God does not do a wholesale trade. God is a retailer. He deals with one and one. Amen. As people see numbers, God is seeing an individual. Hallelujah. And this is why I love this God. He knows me by name. He understands me. And when people don't, he will still remain faithful. And I want to thank God for us who are serving God. And this is the only thing that we have. And this is the only thing that will keep us going. This is the only thing that will always remember us. That we are serving a faithful God. A very faithful God. A very faithful God. So I want us to look at uh, uh, another scripture here. And the scripture I want us to look at is a very profound scripture that I want us to, to just check. I want us to check that. That scripture. And as I said, we'll try, we'll try to read them. We'll try to read these scriptures. We'll try to read these scriptures. He will always remember us. He will always remember us. God will always remember us. You know, sometimes we are look, using these, these things here, these things, and they don't open quickly as I want. But I know... It will open. It will just open. He will always remember us. God is so faithful. He will always remember each and everything that we do for him. When everybody forgets, he remembers. Uh, the book of Esther, as I said, the book of Esther, this is a beautiful story. In the book of Esther, we know several characters in this book. The king and the queen, Esther. And you remember two people, the main characters of this book, Haman and Mordecai. You remember the story? All the story goes around these four characters in the book of Esther. In fact, theologians who are here, just to remind you, is a book that does not mention the name God, but is a book that carries a lot of the doings of God. We know that, and we'll not go to that. And in this book of Esther, if you look at it in chapter number two, 
in chapter number two, there is something I want to bring across. That there was a Jew who was working at the gate. And this Jew was like what in Kenya we call a modern watchman. A person that opens gate and closes the gate. That was his duty and his name was Mordecai. And a man called Haman really hated the Jewish people during this time. And in fact his mission was to destroy all of them if possible. And this is the lovely story that I love to narrate. Time came that Ammon was so much possessed that he felt that it was getting late for him to destroy these people. But I want to say a remark here as I continue. If God be for you, nobody can be against you. And I think this is a running theme that we all know. God be on our side, nobody can be against us. God will always fight for his people because that is his mission. He will always defend his people. So the nation of Israel here in captivity, they are, they are in a foreign land. And then Haman rises against them. And Mordecai is one at the, at the gate. And every time Haman passes on, he abuses this man of God. This man of God's heart is so heavy. But time was coming when there were two people who had plotted to kill the king. I want you to note that. Two people had a plot to kill the king. And Mordecai overheard what they were saying. This is chapter 2. If you have time, you can read it. But I say, I'll try to paraphrase because it's a long scripture. And there is no need for me to read all of it. But I can paraphrase the story. And if you want to read, let me tell you, you can read chapter 2 from verses 19 through to verses 20. Actually, verses... Uh, uh, 19 to 23. It brings that story very clearly. So these two people were planning to assassinate the king and Mordecai had it and Mordecai took that secret into the ears of Esther. And Esther reported this thing to the king. And the king had a team to investigate this matter. And when this matter was thoroughly investigated, it was revealed that surely the two people wanted to assassinate the king. And the story ends there. Many years had gone, chapter number 6. Many years had gone. Ammon is still trying to assassinate the nation of Israel, the Jews in this country, and more so Mordecai. And you know the story. The, chapter 4 is the main theme of this scripture that says that, you know, if you don't help us at this time, who knows why the Lord has put you into the kingdom at such a time as this. And if you don't help us, our help from, will come from elsewhere. We know that theme. So all this thing is coming at a time that there is a plot to wipe out the Jewish people. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, if God is with you, nobody can wipe you out. In fact, let me put a statement. If God blesses you, nobody can curse you. Amen. If the Lord says today that you are blessed, I don't care how many meetings that they will call. One thing that will remain, that they will all help, help you to get quickly to the blessings of God. So this happens to the nation of, the, the, of, 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 of Israel at this particular time in this foreign land. But to make the story short, okay, Ammon has done everything, 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 and even putting a gallo to come and hang Mordecai. We know the story. But that night... As Haman was planning to hang Mordecai, the king did not get sleep. The king woke up in the middle of the night as if something was poorly wrong. Something was extremely wrong in his life. And then when he woke up in the night, something happened. And I believe it's the Holy Spirit reminded the king. At a time that he was supposed to be assassinated. And he said in himself, what have I done to the person who told me that there were people who wanted to assassinate me? What have I done? It was checked in the record. The king had done nothing. So the king thought this is the time that I can reward somebody who had done me something good many years ago. And I want to say when all people forget, God remembers. And at this particular moment, the Bible says that the king... Call the books to be checked again. Man, everything you do for God, it is written in the presence of God. Hallelujah. And these books and these records, my brother, nobody can steal them in the presence of God. Nobody can corrupt them in the presence of God. God will call them back one more time. 
Hallelujah. I want to say this loudly. God will call all your good deeds one time before you die. And when God sees them, God will reward you. Oh man, I cannot wait to see that time. And you see some of us, all the rewards, we look at heaven. Yes, heaven, heaven is coming. But remember, we are still here. Hello? Uh, we've been fellowshipping with Pastor Mlongech. And we've been quoting this scripture again and again. When Peter, Peter the talkative, I call him Peter the talkative, went to Jesus with the disciples and he said, Lord, we've left everything to follow you. Do you remember, Lord? And he was asking Jesus, do you remember, Lord? We've left our mothers, our homes. We are following you. Do you remember Jesus? And Jesus said, yes, I remember. And Peter concluded this question. And he said, Lord, what are we going to get when we do this for you? And Jesus said, listen, Peter, let me talk to you. When you leave all these things because of me, I will give you a hundredfold here and eternal life in the life to come. I know in heaven we are going, but I'm talking about here. You know, Pentecostal love to take everything to heaven. Today, come down a little bit. Let's be here and talk here. Hapa kuna watu wakiroo. Chunga hao. Si ukiubiri chochote wanasema mbinguni. No, I, I'm not watering down going to heaven, brothers and sisters. I want to go there. But I'm saying today I'm in Boston. And Boston is not heaven. Are you with me? <laughs> so, let me finish this story. So, so the story goes, actually, the story is so beautiful. In chapter 6, which I'm not going to read. I, I, I've, I've read the book of Esther. And I know you've read the book. One of the best narratives. So, in, the, in, in, number, in chapter 6, um, the word has just come. And uh, the king did not sleep that night. The king had just talked about doing something good to the person who had helped him. And he was told, no, king, you've not done anything. And the king said, now I want to, I want to award this. I want to reward this thing. And at the same time, the king is wondering, Haman knocks the door. Tuck, 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 tuck. And the king seeing Haman, the king is asking Haman, Haman, what do you do to a man that you love? And Haman thought, this is me. Uh oh, this is me. Who else can the king love but me? And so Haman comes with a good plan, good plan. <laughs> and Amman says to the king the man that you love you take a white horse you put him on the white horse you get a person who is respected to ride the horse around the town and as the man that is respected ride, ride the horse he will be saying to everybody this is the man that the king loves <laughs> tell you whenever God will not forget you when everybody else forgets I mean, I, I mean, is already. I mean, you've already concluded. Even if I don't say it, you know what has happened already. But let me just conclude for the sake of concluding. So, 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 immediately the king says to Haman, quickly, go and do as you've said to Mordecai. Man, Haman goes back to his wife and says, sweetheart. I may tell you what has happened. I was there. And they are telling me to go and just run around in this town that everybody knows me. And say that this person I'm riding behind me is the man that the king loves. And his wife says, his wife tells him, if he's a Jew, you will not defeat him. His wife tells him, if Mordecai is a Jew, you will not defeat him. Tonight, brothers, we are better than the Jews. We are the sons and daughters of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior. If you see a Christian, my friend, don't joke with that man or woman. You may look at him like he's so thin that you think that when... You know, I don't know about the storms here. But I know in my country there is a, there is a wind wheel that comes in the village. And we were told by our mother that when you see it, you run and, you know, get hold of a tree. Or if you are too, 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 too thin like I used to, he used to tell us to put stones in our pockets so that it may not carry us up. But what I'm saying is that even if you see a Christian like that, please don't underestimate him. Because these people are so special. God can turn around things in the name of God for their favor anytime. That's how God works among Christians.
I mean, we've seen the favor of God, some of us. And we can spend a whole night talking about the goodness of God and the favor of God. Because God loves his children. So his wife tells him, man, if these are Jews, get ready for much more humiliation. Because you will not defeat them. Tell your neighbor, nobody will defeat me. And these are the words that are inscribed in the book of Joshua chapter 1. If you read the book of Joshua chapter 1 verse 7 verse 9. Have I not told you? Just be strong and be courageous. Because nobody will withstand you all the days of your life. If we are with God, nobody will withstand us. Not because of us, but Christ in us. I love the book of 1 John chapter 4 verse 4 part B that says, Little children... You, you overcome him because the one in you is greater than he who is in the world. The reason why we overcome is not because we somebody is. It is because of the one that we carry. And that is our Lord Jesus Christ. So brothers and sisters, I'm here to convince you that when everybody else forgets God. Just, just repeat. When everybody else forgets God. That's what I'm talking about. God will remember you. So anyway. Uh, this story ends that after he's done this, the gallow that he had put for Mordecai, we know the story, he was hanged on the same. When they dig a hole for you, it is them who will go into that hole. I repeat this. If they dig a hole for you, it is them who will go into that hole. Your God will preserve you. Hallelujah. Your God will protect you. And we've seen the power of protection. Amen. So let me give you the third scripture. Remember, I'm running a, sing, a simple theme. Only one, not many. But I want to convince you that when we are praying, we all thank God and say, Lord, let them forget, but you remember me. I think that's what I want us to pray tonight, even as I turn it back to the leadership of the fellowship. Just one theme, not many themes. But I want to give you another scripture. I think Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter, chapter 10 talks about a man called Cornelius. And we've been talking about it with Pastor Jared all the time, about Cornelius. That Cornelius was uh, he was not a Jew. Actually, he was not even a believer according to the scriptures. And you know, we know the scripture. He was just, he was just a good man. Just, just a good man. But he was a good man with a difference. Because he was a man. What, what are the two things that signify this man Cornelius? What are two things? He gave. Uh -huh. And he prayed. And he prayed. Giving and praying. And after he's done all that, and I don't want to turn there, just write in your notes chapter 10, Acts chapter 10. And I want to paraphrase it again. So Cornelius is a man who gives generously and prays generously. And as he was doing that without thinking otherwise, it seems to me that God in heaven reached a point that he looked down and he saw a memorial. God saw a memorial. And this memorial was not just down here, it was in heaven. That the memorial was reminding God of a man called Cornelius. And the Bible says that God said to Cornelius. That all your arms and your prayers have reached God. You see there are those things that we do. And we think that nobody sees. And most so when we give to God. You see when we give to God. We don't go everywhere with the microphone. We tell people I gave, yes I gave yesterday. Or I give, I'm giving tomorrow. These are the giving that we just give and we forget. But I thank God that there is no gift. There is no service that we do to God. That does not remain as a memorial before God. God will look at it and God will say, this is sister so and so. And I want to go down and tell her that I've seen what she's doing. So God will always remember. And in fact, another scripture is Dorcas. I mean, he, she was called Tabitha as well in the book of Acts. She was a widow woman who used to go around, make good clothing and give freely to people. And what happened? When she died, people whirled around her work. And not only that, miracle took place god will always remember everything you do and i'm saying this to encourage you tonight in fact my objective tonight to, to help you remember that if there is anything we can be good at is serving god doing things for god because you see when you come to church every now and then i think there are people who are ask, asking you but what do you do in church every every day i hear you go to church what do you do there Someday they will know what we do here. When our God rises up and begins to bless us. Because every time we come. When we come to Monday Fellowship. People think that we, we have nothing else to do. We have so much to do. But we have prioritized our things well. We know what goes number one. We know that 
First things goes first. And the first thing in our lives is to please God and to serve God. So this went through to Cornelius and God saw it. And if God saw it with Cornelius, he will see it with you. Because he's a God of no partiality. What is done there, I can do here and will do it again. So I pray that as we do this tonight, we'll be able to remember that even in our churches that God has called us in these fellowships, let's continue to do good in the name of the Lord. I think I've done three scriptures already. Tell you anybody's just finishing now. I told you that I'll not keep you. I'm very true to my word. The, 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 the last one is a little bit long and uh, a little bit long, a little bit long, but uh, Genesis chapter 40 verse 1 to verse 23. This is another beautiful story. And again, I'll paraphrase it. I mean, if you want to read, you can read, but there is no need. I'll just paraphrase this story. This is the time that Joseph has been arrested, taken to prison falsely. We know the story. And uh, as he went to the prison, he's meeting two people from Pharaoh who are also in the prison. And this one is a cupbearer. And one is a baker who bakes bread in the house of Pharaoh. And one is the man who carries the cup to the king. And they are also put in prison with Joseph. One night they have a dream. And it happens that Joseph is there. They are wondering about their dream. And I want to say that to the, bre to the baker, I mean, let me, let me paraphrase it. Joseph tells them to tell them the dream and Joseph is there now to interpret the dream for them. And Joseph interprets the dream and tells the baker, uh, the baker, the baker of the bread, that you, after th three days, you will be killed. But then to the cup bearer, he says, according to you, after three days, you will be released. But Joseph says these words to the man who will be released. He says, when you go there, remember me. I'm just speaking that word. Remember? The Bible says, if you continue, that when he went to Pharaoh, he forgot about Joseph. He did not remember Joseph. Um, what I'm trying to say is that in this world, people will forget you. Tell your neighbor they will forget you. Have you been forgotten by a friend? When he says, I'll do everything. I'll, I'll remember you. It happens everywhere. So this guy here is forgetting that Joseph was to be helped. And in fact, if you need a let, let me let me tell you, tell, give you give you the scripture. Have, you, have I given you the scripture? No. Okay, I said Genesis chapter forty, verse one to twenty-three. But in verse twenty-three, verse twenty-three. Yet he did not. The chief better remember Joseph, but he forgot him. That is verse twenty-three. He did not remember Joseph, although Joseph had prophesied to him. But when he went to the other side, he did not remember. And let me say this thing. The people that you've helped so much are the people who will forget you very much. I'll repeat that. The people that you've helped so much are the people who will forget you so much. And this is not to discourage you because even if they forget you, God will remember you. God will remember you. When people use you and dump you, God will take you from the dump site and also use you. When they use you and dump you, God will search for you in the dump site. He will bring you up and reuse you again. So I don't care how many times they, they dump you because God will always pick you. So this guy deliberately forgot Joseph. Deliberately forgot Joseph. And but did God forget Joseph? The story continues that God delivered Joseph as well. And not only delivering Joseph, he had put him to second in command in the old territory, in the old kingdom. When your God comes, people will know that your God has visited you. Even those who have forgotten you will begin to remember you. They'll begin to say a lot of stories like we hear in Kenya. That you see, if God begins to bless you, you meet everybody. They begin to say how their grandparents played football with your grandparents. <laughs> you know, your great-great-grandparent with my great-great-grandparent, my brother. They play together because they're seeing blessings. When God bless you, everybody becomes a friend. 
They will forget you, but God will not forget you. Allow me to finish with the last scripture and then we pray. I said I just wanted to run one simple theme. Uh, the last one I said would be the book of uh, 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 Luke. The book of Luke chapter 23. Very beautiful story about the cross. About the cross. Jesus is hanged with two thieves. And one is on his right hand side. One is in the left hand side. And the other one mocks him and says, You, if you are the Lord, why can't you save yourself? What are you doing here with us? But the other one says, Listen, my brother, we are here because of what we've done. This man is so innocent. They are judging him. They are condemning him for nothing. And uh, this guy turns to Jesus and says, Lord, remember me when you go to your kingdom. And Jesus said these words. Today, you will be with me in paradise. When all people forget, God remembers you. I want us to pray. And your prayer tonight is, God, I've walked with you. Remember me. Lord, I've served you. Remember me. I believe all of us, including myself, there are areas, there are things in our lives that we still need God to act and do, change and move us to the next level. So to why we are here tonight. That the God who remembers his people will just remember us. When all of them forget about us, may the Lord Almighty remember the good deeds. And even your labor in him, like it is written in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 58. Be steadfast brothers. Stand firm immovable. Knowing that your labor in God is not in vain. God remembers your labor. I pray that tonight God's mercies be upon you. I pray that even as you leave this church tonight, as you go home, you meet your miracle based on those things that you've done to Jehovah. And may the Lord remember you with his mercies tonight. May the Lord do it to you according to his mercies that endures forever. You are saying, preach, I don't know you, but just pray with me that God remembers me. In whichever way possible. I don't know what it is, but you are saying, yes, deep in my heart, there is something I'm crying for God to remember me. God, just remember me. As I've seen in your scriptures, you've remembered many in many scriptures. Let me pray with you right now. You are saying, I'm here, preacher. Just include me in your prayer right now. Just raise up your hand as I pray. If you're in the house. Thank you for those hands. God bless you richly. I want to believe God with you for your miracles. I believe that Jesus Christ is the same. You are saying, Lord, remember me. Remember me, Lord. Remember me. When all people might have not said thank you. But Lord, I've served you. I've done it for you and to you. Lord, remember me. Remember me. That's your cry. It's only one theme tonight. That the God of heaven remembers us. Even in our difficulties, even though we don't measure up with his standards, but he is able to remember us. Just raise up that hand as I offer this simple prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I bring these saints to you tonight. Lord, they've served you, they've walked with you. Lord, they've prayed you, God, they've done good things to other people. Lord, I pray that tonight when you remember your children around the globe, you will remember these dear ones. Lord, I pray that as you remember them, you will be lifting them from where they are, even to the next level. Lord, I pray that you will cause things to begin to happen on the basis of their service to you, God. You are not a God who pays people, but Lord, you can do things that pleases your servants. Father God, I come against each and every attack, each and every doubt that might be raining in their minds tonight. I resist that in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that my father, they meet with their miracles. I pray that Lord, you cause them to see the goodness and the good life in the lives, in the life of those that are waiting upon you. Oh God, I release your favor and your spirit to begin to minister to them, Lord. I pray that you minister to them. Oh God, it is you who made it possible for them to come here tonight. To meet with you, God. To hear this word that, Lord, you had put in my heart. 
that Lord when everything else happens when people begin to turn their back against us when people forget the things that we've done to them Lord Jesus you will remember it and when you do remember it my father you will meet with the needs of your people Father God I thank you because I believe that you've touched these people Lord I bless you and it is in Jesus name I pray and believe Amen God bless you thank you Bwana asifiwe. Ah, tumebarikiwa. Na bwana tunapiga makofi kama like we don't mean what we, we have done. Bwana asifiwe. Ah, tupigie bwana makofi.